Hello children. In this video lecture, I will explain you chapter of moments, supplementary reader, chapter 5, The Happy Prince, written by Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was an Irish poet and playwright. After writing in different forms throughout the 1880s, the early 90s saw him become one of the most popular playwrights in London. He is best remembered for his epigram plays and his novel The Picture of Dorian Gray. He had penned down a series of priceless novels, weaving threads of stories, wrote another and called it The Happy Prince. The Happy Prince is a short story. In reality, it is actually a novel in its essence. With the simplicity of a fable, it is the favorite of not just the kids who grew up with it, but also of their parents and their grandparents who narrate it to them. The story The Happy Prince is a story of a prince and a little swallow, a little bird. The Happy Prince was a beautiful statue on a tall column in the city. The story throws light on the problems of social inequality, the healing power of love, and the loss of innocence. The statue of Happy Prince used to be very happy when alive because he was kept ignorant of any sadness or suffering outside his palace walls. He was kept on a high pedestal after his death. His statue was made of gold, ruby and other jewels. His placement atop allows him to witness for the first time the pain and the misery experienced by the poor of the city of whom he had remained ignorant. A swallow bird and the statue of a prince sacrifice their happiness and wealth for the good of others who are more ready than them. It's not about the characters. The happy prince, he is a beautiful statue which parts with all its wealth to keep the poor and needy. The swallow is a migrant bird who sacrifices his life to help the prince in distributing his valuables among the poor. Let's start explanation of the chapter. The happy prince was a beautiful statue. He was covered with gold. He had sapphires for eyes and a ruby in his sword. Why did he want to part with all the gold that he had and his precious stones? Let's understand this thing from the story. High above the city on a tall column stood the statue of the happy prince. He was gilded all over with thin leaves of fine gold. For eyes, he had two bright sapphires and a large red ruby glowed on his sword hilt. The statue of a prince stood on a high platform overlooking the city. This prince was called a happy prince because when he was alive, he always remained very happy. Upon his death, a big statue of his was erected in the center of the city in his remembrance. The statue of this happy prince was covered with thin layers of gold and instead of eyeballs, there were two bright shining sapphire stones. In the handle of his sword, a bright ruby stone was placed. One night, there flew over the city a little swallow. His friends had gone away to Egypt six weeks before, but he had stayed behind. Then he decided to go to Egypt too. Swallow is a tiny bird. Although it is not a human being, still the writer is referring to it as he and his here in the story. He says that all the birds of this fellow had flown away to Egypt six weeks ago. This bird did not go with them 
but later it thought of going to Egypt to his friends. So the bird was on its way to Egypt. All day long he flew and at night time he arrived at the city. Where shall I put up? He said, I hope the town has made preparations. Then he saw the statue on the tall column. The bird kept on flying on its way to Egypt. And at night it reached the city, the city of the happy prince. It wanted to stay somewhere for the night. It thought upon where to stay at night, the bird said that hopefully the city had made some arrangements for it to stay. Obviously, the bird did not mean here what it was saying. We could say here that probably the bird is being humorous. How the city can prepare for the bird's stay? When this tiny bird saw that huge statue of the happy prince, it thought of staying there for the night. I will put up there, he cried. It is a fine position with plenty of fresh air. So he alighted just between the feet of the happy prince. So the bird thought that it was a good place spend the night. There was shelter and a lot of fresh air. So the bird came and alighted. It stopped and sat in between the feet of the statue of the happy prince. I have a golden bedroom, he said softly to himself as he looked around. And he prepared to go to sleep. But just as he was putting his head under his wing, a large drop of water fell on him. What a curious thing, he cried. There is not a single cloud in the sky. The stars are quite clear and bright. And yet it is raining. Then another drop fell. When the bird sat in between the feet of the happy prince, it was surrounded with gold. So it thought that it had a bedroom made of gold because it was surrounded by gold all around. As it was about to sleep, as it was putting its head under the wing, suddenly a large drop of water fell on it. The bird was surprised because of a sudden a drop of water fell on it. It thought that neither was it raining nor the rainy season was going on. The swallow could not believe this because the sky was not cloudy and stars were shining. Just then another drop of water fell on it. What is the use of a statue if it cannot keep the rain off? He said. I must look for a good chimney pot. And he determined to fly away. But before he had opened his wings, a third drop fell. And he looked up and saw. Ah! What did he see? The eyes of the happy prince were filled with tears. And tears were running down his golden cheeks. His face was so beautiful in the moonlit, moonlight that the little swallow was filled with pity. The swallow thought that the statue was useless because it was not able to protect it from the rain. So he thought he should not keep under the statue. The swallow thought that it was better if it took shelter in a chimney of a house and thought to move away from there because the statue was not able to protect them from the rain. Before the bird flew away, the third top of water fell on him and it looked up. As soon as the bird looked up, he saw that the eyes of the happy prince statues were filled with tears. These drops of water were the tears drops falling off the statue's golden cheeks. When Swallow looked at Happy Prince's face, it was looking beautiful in the moonlight. 
the little bird's heart was filled with pity for the weeping statue. Who are you? He said. I am the happy prince. Why are you weeping then? Asked the swallow. You have quite drenched me. It asked the statue that who it was. The statue replied that it was the happy prince. The swallow thought that the statue was of the happy prince but it was crying. The bird asked the statue that why it was crying. It added that it had soaked it with its tears. When I was alive and had a human heart, answered the statue, I did not know what tears were. For I lived in the palace where sorrow is not allowed to enter. My courtiers called me the happy prince and happy indeed I was. So I lived and so I died. And now that I am dead, they have set me up there. Here, so high, that I can see the ugliness and all the misery of my sitting. And though my heart is made of lead, yet I cannot choose but weep. The happy prince narrated his story to the swallow. The happy prince said that when he was alive and he had a human heart, human heart means here the heart which beats. It means when he was alive, at that time he was not aware what tears were and what sorrow was. As he lived in a palace where there was happiness all around. All the people who used to work in his court used to call him Happy Prince because he used to be happy all the time. And he had not seen sorrow at all. And he said that, he lived happily and died in happiness only. When he had a human heart, he never cried. He was not aware what tears were because he had seen happiness only and never faced any sorrow. Now when he was dead, they put up him so high in the form of a statue on a pedestal that he could see the whole city and the ugliness of the city. He could see that there were so many people living in misery, lack of food, hunger, money, homelessness. Now when the statue's heart was made of lead, a metal, although it did not have any feelings, then also when it saw all the sadness, it became sad and wept. The statue was crying. What? Is he not solid gold? Said the swallow to himself. He was too polite to make any personal remarks. When the happy prince was telling his sad story, the swallow was thinking about something else in his mind. The bird wondered, that the statue of the prince was not made of solid gold. It was surprised. It thought that from outside the statue was covered with gold. But at it said that the heart was made of lead and not of gold. It realized that it was hollow and was not made of solid gold. It saw that the statue was very sad and was crying. So he did not make any personal remarks. He did not comment anything about the statue because it was giving the value of the statue's feelings. Far away, continued the statue in a low musical voice. Far away in a little street, there is a poor house. One of the windows is open and through it, Windows is open and through it I can see a woman seated at a table. Her face was thin and worn. 
and she has a chorus. Red hands, all pricked by needle, for she is a seamstress. She is embroidering flowers on a satin gown for the loveliest of the queen's maids of honor to wear at the next court ball. In a bed in the corner of the room, her little boy is lying ill. He has a fever and is asking his mother to give him oranges. His mother has nothing to give him but river water, so he is crying. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, will you not bring her the ruby out of my sword hilt? My feet are fastened to this pedestal and I cannot move. The statue continued its story. It spoke in a very musical voice that far away there was a house of a poor woman. The window of her house was open and it could see through the window that she was sitting near the table. Her face was thin and she was tired. Her hands were rough and had become red because they had been pricked by the needle. The woman was a seamstress. Seamstress means children, a woman who makes a living by sewing, means who is doing an embroidery and tailoring. The woman was now embroidering flowers on a gown of the queen's maid who, could, who would walk along with the queen during the court ball. Court ball, we can call it an official government party. Now, the statue said that the lady who was embroidering the gown had a little child who was not well. He was suffering from fever and was asking his mom to give him oranges. As his mother was very poor, she had no money. She could only give him water that also only river water and that is why the little boy was crying. So the happy prince statue requested the swallow to take out the ruby stone from the handle of its sword and give it to the lady. It added that its feet were fastened to the platform because of which it could not move. I am waited for in Egypt, said the swallow. My friends are flying up and down the Nile and talking to the large lotus flowers. Soon they will go to sleep. The prince asked the swallow to st stay with him for one night and be his messenger. The boy is so thirsty and the mother so sad, he said. I don't think I like boys, answered the swallow. I want to go to the Egypt. The swallow replied that it had to go to Egypt. Its friends were waiting for it. The swallow said that its friends were in Egypt. They were flying near the Nile River and talking to the large lotus flowers which grew there. So they would go to sleep and so it wanted to reach Egypt at the earliest. The statue requested the swallow to stay with him for one night. He asked him to be his messenger and work on his behalf. He said that the boy was very thirsty and his mother was very sad. So it should go and give the ruby stone to her. Once again the swallow opposed his request and said that it did not like boys. So why should it help that boy? Moreover, moreover it had to go to Egypt. But the happy prince looked so sad that the little swallow was sorry. It is very cold here, he said. But he agreed to stay with him for one night and be his messenger. Thank you, little swallow, said the prince. The swallow picked out the great ruby from the prince's sword and it flew away with it in his beak over the roofs of the town. 
The happy prince was so sad that Swallow felt sorry for him. It said that it was very cold there, but it would stay with him for one night and the next morning. It would do his work. The happy prince thanked him. Finally, the swallow took out the ruby stone from the happy prince's horn and the bird took the ruby in its beak and flew over the town. He passed by the cathedral tower where the white marble angels were sculptured. He passed by the palace and heard the sounds of dancing. A beautiful girl came out of the balcony with her lover. I hope my dress will be ready in time for the state ball, she said. I have ordered flowers to be embroidered on it, but the seamstresses are so lazy. As this fellow was in, in its way to the poor woman's house, it passed the cathedral. Cathedral is a church and on the church tower, white colored marble angels were sculptured. Then he reached the palace. He crossed the palace and he could hear the sound of dancing from inside the palace. When this fellow was crossing over the palace, a girl came out on the balcony along with her lover. She was hoping that the gown which she had given to the seamstress for embroidering would be ready on time. She was talking about the same gown on which that lady was doing embroidering, to whom the bird had to give the ruby stone. He passed over the river and saw the lanterns hanging on the mast of the ships. At last he came to the poor woman's house and looked in. The boy was tossing feverishly on his bed and the mother had fallen asleep. She was so tired. In he hoped and laid the great ruby on the table beside the woman's thimble. Then he flew gently round the bed, fanning the boy's forehead with his wing. How cool I feel, said the boy. I must be getting better. And he sank into a delicious slumber. When the swallow flew over the river, ships also came along the way. Lanterns were hanging on their sails. Finally, the swallow reached the woman's house. The boy was suffering from fever and for that reason he was not able to go to sleep. So he was turning left and right on his bed and his mother was very tired due to working for long and had fallen asleep. The swallow put the ruby stone on the table near the thimble. Children, thimble is a metal or plastic cap with a closed end which the person who is embroidery used to wear. That's why the needle is not going to prickle them for many times. So he capped the ruby beside it on the table and after keeping the ruby stone on the table, the swallow went near the boy as his mother was sleeping and no one was taking care of him. It shook its wing near him because of which the boy could felt the cool air and felt better. The boy felt that he was getting better and went to sleep. With this, we can make out that the swallow was a kind-hearted bird. Then the swallow flew back to the happy prince and told him what he had done. It is curious, he remarked, but I feel quite warm now, although it is so cold. That is because you have done a good action, said the prince. And the little swallow began to think and then fall asleep, thinking always made him sleepy. The swallow flew back and went to the statue of Happy Prince and told him 
what all he had done. Now the bird felt warm. It says that it was very strange that it was feeling little warm even though the weather was very cold. The prince said that it was feeling warm because it had done a great good deed. It had helped someone. After listening to Happy Prince, the swallow started thinking and when he started thinking, he felt sleepy because whenever he thought, he used to feel sleepy. He used to feel sleepy. When the day broke, he flew down to the river and had a bath. Tonight I go to Egypt, said the swallow. And he was in high spirits at the prospect. He visited all the monuments and sat a long time on the top of the church steeple. Next morning the swallow bird went to the river and took a bath and thought that that night he would reach Egypt. He was very happy. So the swallow bird visited all the monuments of the city and finally he went and sat on the high tower of the church. When the moon rose, he flew back to the happy prince. Have you any commissions for Egypt? He cried. I am just starting. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you stay with me one night longer? I am waited for in Egypt, answered the swallow. When it was night and the moon rose in the sky, the swallow went to Happy Prince and sought permission to leave for Egypt. Now again Happy Prince requested Swallow to stay with him for one more night and Swallow replied that he needed to go to Egypt because his friends were waiting for him. Swallow, Swallow, little Swallow, said the Prince. Far away across the city, I see a young man in a garret. He is leaning over a desk covered with papers and in the glass by his side, there is a bunch of withered violets. His hair is brown and crisp and his lips are red as a pomegranate. And he has large and dreamy eyes. He is trying to finish a play for the director of the theatre, but he is too cold to write any more. There is no fire in the grate and hunger has made him faint. Now here the happy prince is telling the swallow about his second work. Said that far away across the city he could see in a small dark room at the top of the house a young man was sitting. He was sitting on a desk on which the papers were spread all over and he was trying to work hard. He had a glass lying near him in which withered flowers, dried flowers were lying. Further, the happy prince gave a description of that boy. He said that his hair were brown and crisp which means that he had not taken bath for a long time. His lips were red like a pomegranate and he had big dreamy eyes. This means that this boy was very ambitious and hardworking. Further, the happy prince said that this boy needed to finish writing a play as he was a writer and he had to give the play to the director after writing. But he did not have strength to write anymore because he was feeling very cold. The boy had no money, so that's why there was no fire in his fireplace and he was very hungry and also due to which he was feeling very weak. I will wait with you one night longer, said the swallow, who really had a good heart. He asked if he should take another ruby to the young playwright. The swallow understood what Happy Prince was trying to tell him. 
he knew that happy prince wanted to help this boy so agreed to stay back for one more night and further the swallow asked happy prince if he should take another ruby stone to give it to the young playwright just like he had given it to the old lady alas i have no ruby now said the prince my eyes are all that i have left they are made of rare sapphires which were brought out of india a thousand years ago he ordered the swallow to pluck out one of them and take it to the playwright he will sell it to the jeweler and buy firewood and finish his play he said prince said that it was very sad that he did not have any more ruby stones with him happy prince said that now he had his eyes which were made of very precious and rare sapphire stones which had been brought thousands of years ago from india so happy prince told swallow to take out one sapphire and give it to the boy the swallow was very sad to learn that the happy prince wanted to give his eyes to that boy dear prince said the swallow i cannot do that and he began to weep swallow swallow little swallow said the prince do as i command you so the swallow plucked out the prince's eyes and flew away to the young man's garret it was easy enough to get in as there was a hole in the roof through this he darted and came into the room the young man had his head buried in his hands so he did not hear the flutter of the bird's wings and when he looked up he found the beautiful sapphire lying on the withered violets he told happy prince that he could not do so and he started crying but then the happy prince ordered the swallow to do what he had told him to do so finally the swallow took out one eye one sapphire out of the prince eyes and flew to the young man's garret there was a hole on the roof of the room so the swallow entered the room through that hole the boy was sitting with his head on his hands and that's why he did not hear the flutter of the bird's wing and when he looked up he saw the sapphire stone lying on the dried flowers i am beginning to be appreciated he cried this is from some great admirer now i can finish my play and he looked quite happy the next day the swallow flew down to the harbor he sat on the mast of a large vessel and watched the sailors working i'm going to egypt cried the swallow but nobody minded and when the moon rose he flew back to the happy prince i have come to bid you goodbye he cried swallow swallow little swallow said the prince will you not stay with me one night longer when the boy saw the beautiful stone he felt that some admirer some person who praised him had sent a gift for him so he thought that with this he could f- now finish his play next morning the swallow bird flew down to the harbor and sat on the mast of a ship he spoke loudly that he was going to egypt and when it was night he flew back to happy prince swallow once again told the happy prince that it had come to say goodbye he was going to egypt and once again happy prince requested swallow to stay with him for one more night it is winter answered the swallow and the snow will soon be here in egypt the sun is warm on the green palm trees 
and the crocodiles lie in the mud and look lazily about them. In the square below, said the prince, there stands a little match girl. She has let her matches fall in the gutter and they are all spoiled. Her father will beat her if she does not bring home some money and she is crying. She has no shoes or stockings and her little head is bare. Pluck out my other eye and give it to her and her father will not beat her. The swallow said to the happy prince that the winter season had started and after some time it would start it snowing. The weather in Egypt was warm and even the crocodiles lay on the mud lazily there. So he told him to let him go to Egypt. But the prince has given him the third assignment. The prince said that there was a match girl. She was a little girl and all her matches had fallen in the gutter and got wet. All her matchsticks were spoiled so and she could not sell them and she would not earn any money. And when she would go home without money, then her father would get angry and beat her. For this reason, the girl was crying. Further, the happy prince said that she was not wearing shoes or stockings and she had not covered her head. She was very poor. So he said to the swallow to take out another sapphire from his eyes and give it to her so that her father did not beat her. I will stay away with you one night longer, said the swallow, but I cannot pluck out your eye. You would be quite blind then. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince, do as I command you. So he plucked out the prince's other eye and darted down with it. He swooped past the match girl and slipped the jewel into the palm of her hand. What a lovely bit of glass, cried the little girl. And she ran home laughing. Then the swallow came back to the prince. You are blind now, he said, so I will stay with you always. No, little swallow, said the poor prince. You must go away to Egypt. No, I will stay with you always, said the swallow. And he slept at the prince's bed. Swallow agreed to stay with him for one more night, but he refused to take out another safar because if he did that, then Happy Prince would be blind. Again, Happy Prince told Swallow to do what he had ordered him. So finally, the Swallow obeyed the Happy Prince's order. He took another safar stone from his eyes and threw to the little match girl. And when he saw the match girl, he bent very low and kept the sapphire stone on the little girl's hand. The little girl was very happy to see the stone and she went home happily. When Swallow returned to the happy prince, he told him that now he was blind and so he would stay with him forever. But happy prince said to the Swallow that he should go to Egypt. But Swallow refused and said that he would stay with him only and swallow slap on the prince's feet. All the next day he sat on the prince's shoulder and told him stories of what he had seen in strange lands. Dear little swallow, said the prince, you tell me of marvelous things, but more marvelous than anything is the suffering of man and woman. There is no mystery so great as misery. Fly over my city, little swallow, and tell me what you see there. The swallow used to stay along with the happy prince all the time and used to tell him the stories of the different places that he had visited. The happy prince said to the swallow to tell him wonderful things, but added that nothing was more wonderful than the suffering of people. No mystery was bigger than sadness and he wanted to know who all were sad in his kingdom. 
So he asked the swallow to go and let him know what he saw while flying over the city. So the swallow flew over the great city and saw the rich making merry in their beautiful houses while the beggars were sitting at the gates. He flew into dark lands and saw the white faces of the starving children looking out listlessly at the black streets. Under the archway of a bridge, two little boys were lying in each other's arms to try and keep themselves warm. How hungry we are, they said. You must not lie here, shouted the watchman, and they wandered out into the rain. Then he flew back and told the prince what he had seen. I am covered with fine gold, said the prince. You must take it off, leaf by leaf, and give it to the poor. The living always think that gold can make them happy. So the swallow flew and took a round over the city and saw that the rich people were living happily in their beautiful houses and they were partying while the poor people were begging and sitting outside the gates. Then he went to the dark lanes where there was no light also and the poor where the poor people lived. There he saw that the children were hungry due to which their faces had turned white. Further the swallow saw two little boys under the archway of the bridge. They were lying much closer to each other so that they kept themselves warm. They were so poor they did not have food. So they were trying to keep each other warm. Two children were starving and wondering that how hungry they were. Just then a watchman appeared and scolded them. He shouted and made them go away from there. The poor children keep wandering in the rain as they were homeless. The happy prince told Swallow that his whole body was covered with fine gold and he could take tiny pieces of gold from his body and give it to the poor people in need. All the living beings required money and when they would get gold, they would feel happy. Leaf after leaf of the fine gold the swallow picked off till the happy prince looked quite dull and grey. Leaf after leaf of the fine gold he brought to the poor and the children's faces grew rosier. They laughed and played in the street. We have bread now, they cried. Then the snow came and after the snow came the frost. The streets looked as if they were made of silver. Everybody went about in furs. And now the little boys wore scarlet caps and skated on the ice. Slowly, the swallow took out the gold layers from the statue of Happy Prince and as he removed The layers of the gold, the Happy Prince statue started looking dull and grey. As the statue of Happy Prince started looking dull and grey, the children grew happier because through it they were getting food to it. Finally, it started snowing and when a lot of snow fell, everything froze. Everyone was wearing clothes made of fur. Small children were wearing red color caps and were roaming here and there. They were skating on the ice. The poor little swallow grew colder and colder but he would not leave the prince. He allowed him to well. He picked up crumbs outside the baker's door when the baker was not looking and tried to keep himself warm by flapping its wings. But at last he knew that he was going to die. He had just enough strength to fly up to the prince's shoulder once more. Goodbye, dear prince, he murmured. Will you let me kiss your hand? I am glad that you are going to Egypt at last, little swallow, said the prince. You have stayed too long here. 
but you must kiss me on the lips for i love you swallow bird was feeling very cold but he kept on sitting near the happy prince statue he did not want to leave him because he loved the happy prince the bird did not want to die so he used to go to the bakery where the baker used to bake the bread and to eat the bread crumbs and try to keep himself warm by flapping its wings the swallow was aware that he was about to die he had only enough strength to fly back to the statue of happy prince and he says now when this swallow is about to die he said to the happy prince that and ask for permission to kiss his hand happy prince thought that the swallow wanted to go to egypt so he said that he was happy that finally the bird was going to egypt happy prince said to the swallow that it had stayed there for a long time and now it should go to egypt it wanted the bird to kiss its lips instead of the hands because the statue loved the bird it is not to egypt that i am going said the swallow i am going to the house of death death is the brother of sleep is he not and he kissed the happy prince on the lips and fell down dead at it, his feet at that moment a curious crack sounded inside the statue as if something had broken the fact is that the leaden heart had snapped right in two it certainly was a dreadfully hard frost the swallow bird said to the happy prince that he was not going to egypt but to the house of death he added that death was a brother of sleep he kissed the happy prince on his lips and fell down to the feet of the hungry happy prince and died as soon as the bird died on the happy prince feet an unusual sound came out from the statue the sound was of the breaking of the statue's heart which was made of a lead the heart broken because of the death of his beloved bird but it is said that it was so cold that the heart broke into two pieces early the next morning the mayor was walking in the square below in company with the town councillors as they passed the column he looked up at the statue dear me how shabby the happy prince looks he said how shabby indeed cried the town councillors who always agreed with the mayor and they went up to look at it the next morning the mayor of the city along with his councillors was talking taking a round of the area where the statue of the prince was erected and when he crossed the statue and looked up at it he said that the statue of a happy prince looked untidy the councillors always agreed with whatever the mayor used to say so they also asserted that the statue looked untidy the ruby has fallen out of his sword his eyes are gone and he is golden no longer said the mayor in fact he is a little better than a beggar little better than a beggar said the town councillors and here is actually a dead bird at its feet continued the mayor we must really issue a proclamation that birds are not to be allowed to die here and the town clerk made a note of the suggestion the mayor noticed that the ruby stone which was placed in the handle of the sword was missing and the sapphires from the statue's eyes were also missing and the layer of the gold from its body was also missing the mayor said that it seemed as if it was the statue of a beggar and the town councillors agreed with him the mayor noticed that a dead bird was lying on the feet of the statue 
Then he told the town councillors to pass an order that the birds were not allowed to die on the feet of the statue. And the town clerk made a note of the suggestion given by him. So he pulled down the statue of the happy prince as he is no longer beautiful, he is no longer useful, said the art professor at the university. Then they melted the statue in a furnace where what a strange thing, said the overseer of the workmen at the foundry. This broken lead heart will not melt in the furnace. We must throw it away. So they threw it on a dust heap where the dead swallow was also lying. The art professor of the university said that the statue of the happy prince did not look beautiful and was not useful anymore at that time. And so they should demolish it, they should break it. So they melted the statue which was made of lead in a furnace and the supervisors of the foundry saw a strange thing. The heart of the happy prince statue which was break, broken into two pieces was not melting in the furnace. So they threw it as it is in the dust heap. Coincidentally, they threw the heart of the happy prince where the dead swallow was also lying. Bring me the most, two most precious things in the city, said God to one of his angels. And the angel brought him the leaden heart and the dead bird. You have rightly chosen, said God, for in my garden of paradise this little bird shall sing forevermore and in my city of gold the happy prince shall praise me. God asked one of his angels to bring him the two most precious things of the city. The angel brought the two pieces of heart of the statue and the dead fellow bird. God said to the angel that it had brought the right thing. It had chosen the right things which were indeed the most precious things of the city. He said that the bird would always sing in the garden of his paradise and the happy prince would stay in a city of gold and always admire him. So children, uh, here is the end of the explanation and for your kind reference, I have given all textual question answers. These you have to write neatly in your notebook. That's all you have to learn very well. Thank you.